Hi guys, Green Poison here, bringing you another video. Today I'm going to give you a tutorial on DX Tori. So let's start with the first thing. So here is your, um, this is what your target sort of uh, application or whatever it's going to be. So this is where it will choose and show you what game you are recording. In fact, so here it will like keep a log because open of all the games you've played. And other things. I'm using Snag yet at the moment to record it. It's just it's one of the best things I've got uh, to record. And it will just keep a sort of how should we say it? It'll keep a uh, profile for it. So it, track mania profile. It'll record track mania. But as it is, I mean, I'll just leave that as that. So you can ignore the setting, which is going to ignore all this and where what it's recording and all the stuff. That is just not useful you don't need to know that that's it's fine just, just don't just let it do its thing here so you've got your um status so video fps it will show you your fps in the corner i tend to have it because it will let you know when you're recording when you're not because your frames will drop down and it'll tell you your in game like the frames you're actually getting and the frames you're recording which is really really good because it's like the only program you can record, you can play at one FPS and record at a different one. So it'll, it allows your computer to run faster, which is why Mirror's Edge is running really, really nicely on my uh, setup at the moment. It's really nice. I do enjoy it. And then you can write file FPS. I don't know what this is, but the number of times the, um, oh, wait, it says it is. The number of times a frame writing two file per second. I don't know what it is. Just tick it. There's nothing wrong with it. And record status right here. So if you untick this. It won't tell you when you're recording, but if you click it, you can have a non-recording color and a recording color. So my non-recording color is probably is red because then you know that it's not because it's really, really. I mean, red is stop or like no. So that's it. I just have to glance up and I know I'm not recording. Whereas green, which is another preset one, which you got, you got the uh, uh, RGB sort of so you can have any color you want. So green's like you can quickly look up at it and you it'll show you that you are recording. Also, when you're recording, it will show you two. Um, FPS is as I've seen as I've said before. So you, the one that you're one that you're actually seeing and the one your viewers are going to be seeing. So that's always really nice. You can just change this by doing this and pressing OK. And as you can see, it's now yellow. So they're quite opposite. So it's quite nice. And movie capture frame. I don't know what this is. Nor do I know what screenshot uh, frame is. But I don't think you need to know what it is. So just leave them unticked unless um, you need them to go do some more research. And I'm sorry about that. I don't use it. Here we've got a folder. So I have two uh, drives. I write to my. I've got a whole drive dedicated to a mass storage of videos and all that, which is it's only 500 gig, but it's my old laptop. And I thought I don't really want to be reading, writing, and playing. I think what they sort of fit in the same sort of way. But I I play a game off of my C drive. And whilst I'm doing that, I record to a different drive because it's quicker. But to record 720p, you need to get at least 72 megabytes per second. And you can check this out because this will be blank when you add a new one. So if you uh, add folder up here, add folder, say computer, and I want to do like, documents, press OK. It'll add it and you'll say 0 megabytes per second because it won't know. So if you go here, there's a little... Right, stop stopwatch you like you'd see in Minecraft, you click it, choose a file, they want and you just click run, and then it'll just do it quickly and it'll say how many megabytes per second you're gonna be getting. So I get 114 megabytes per second, which is really, really uh, good if you want to record for 720p, so I don't need that, so I can just get rid of it. I record this, 720p is what I do, and I get 72 megabytes per second, so it's nice and clear. If it isn't quite 72 megabytes per second, your footage will be slightly jumpy. There will be it will miss some frames because it's just not fast enough. If you want to record at 1080p at 60 frames per second, you need to have at least 120 uh, 120 megabytes per second, um, and that's 120 plus. 160 is recommended, I do believe, but 125 works just fine. It just won't give you. It just won't look quite as smooth as 160 uh, megabytes per second. Now that's all you need to know, so you just obviously make sure you've got enough room on that drive. I've got, uh, let me have a computer. See here, I've got 252 uh, gig free of the 453 that I've got. So make sure you've got enough room on there and it'll be it'll be fine. you just got to um, 
click the record hotkey because there's no dedicated record button on this, it's much more like for actually have to hit the hotkey. So that's that, and then also you can um, move it up. So if I want this one to the top, I just click that, and I don't need that, that was to see how fast it was, but so that's the drive I need. Make sure that's ticked because then it'll write, uh, then it'll record it to that drive. Now on to the um, hotkeys. You've got start movie capture, you've got push to talk, execute single uh, screenshot, execute high speed screenshot, stop start auto repeat screenshot, toggle overlay status positions, show slash hide movie capture frame, show slash hide screenshot frame. Now move uh, start stop movie capture. That's the one you use to record video. Now what you want to do is make sure it is a key that you know isn't used very much. So the function keys aren't going to be used very much and you're not easily going to straight and get it because it's above the number uh, the number line which is um, quite a stretch from where your palm is on your, uh, on your keyboard because your keyboard your palm will be at the bottom of the keyboard so you have to stretch your hand all the way up and maybe some people even have to move the hand to get the F keys so put it as an F key I say F8 because it's default and it works wonders it's fine there's no problems with it push to talk um, you should Keep on, um, off. Just don't use it. I mean, if you're doing video commentary, you don't really want to be pushing to talk. But if you do, click on it, and then it will prompt you for a key to press. Press a key that's useful and one that you know you remember and one you can get easily. So you just press that. So mine's uh, mouse button, uh, my left mouse button is uh, what I need to click if I want to talk now. But I'm going to get rid of that by clicking this X. So we need to do to clear it. Execute Scringle. Uh, Scringle. Single screen shot is F11. You could change this to F12 so it fits in with um, Steam because oh, Steam is F12, so you could get two screenshots if you wanted to. And high speed screenshot, I think it is just really quick. I think that's all it is. Stop, start, um, start, stop. Also, repeat screenshot is just going to keep taking screenshots until you stop the whole function so you can get like a sort of a stop start movie sort of thing going on which will take some time in editing but you can um, do that that way and then I don't know what these are as I've said before let's move on into movie now um, this is what it's gonna look well it's actually gonna look kind of smaller than this I've stretched it out so you can get a full screen sort of look so this is where this is like the bread and butter of it all this is the meat and potatoes as some people say Right, okay, so this is, like as I say, the meat and potatoes of it all, this is where you're going to get everything. So, as you can see, I've got Lagarith Lossus Codec. This won't come with it. It will use um, DX Tori Video Codec as standard, which is kind of obvious, but if you, you need to go to the link in the description, download this codec, and this will save as an AVI, which you can use in most editing softwares. Uh, I know Sony Vegas, which is what I use, um, supports it, so... And that gives a really, really nice uh, look to it. It's, it's lossless. It's lossless, so it doesn't. Um, yeah, so it's just fine. Mm -hmm. And you, it's just as you see, it's not going to be. There's no video degradation or anything like that. And then if you use Camtasia, for example, you can use uh, TechSmith Codec, the Capture Codec, which is what Snagit. No, which is what Camtasia uses. Um, so you can use that if you want to. Uh, so I recommend using Lagarith lossless Codec. As I say, it'll be in the description below. So go get that, and then it'll just pop up here as after you've installed it. It's a it'll install itself. It'll install by itself. You don't need to do anything. Restart the explorer afterwards, and then you'll see uh, that. Just pick it and just keep it there. Just it'll stay there. You don't need to worry about keyframes or keyframe rate, anything like that. Clipping margins they're all fine unless you've got an issue with um, like black lines or where the game's not shown you can just sort this out by using this these are pixels so it will just move over one pixel at a time so frame rates this is what I mean you can capture different frame rates it gives you some standard frame rates you at the moment 30 fps is what I believe YouTube's doing so I just record 30 fps otherwise I put too much strain on my system and it's just I don't need it so file output this is a file that you it's just a save file that you would so you just hit F8 record it press uh, hit F8 again stop recording and then the file will be in that location direct show output um, it will 
it will output it to a capture device, which I don't know why, but it just does. It's that's what it says here. So interpret that as you will. So here's what I say: it outputs as an AVI file. This is a standard file. Most uh, softwares use it to uh, for, for editing. But raw cap is if you're a real snob about your capture, raw cap is the thing you want because this will give you. It'll be completely lossless. Every it'll be exactly the same as when you um. It'll be uncompressed, and it'll be, re it'll be as close to playing the game yourself or close to in-game graphics as possible because it it's exactly the same. However, the the file sizes are gigabytes. So unless you've got terabytes upon terabytes just for storage, go with AVI. Raw cap's not going to help you. It's just going to give you for the little. The little bit of the little bit of what's called quality increase, you not it's not worth it's not worth it because one it will increase how hard it, it capture will be for your system in total in general, and you're gonna need a really big hard drive to store it on because um, it won't be compressed. Now here, uh, synchronized uh, FPS. This is. It's quite simple. You will just change your frame rate uh, icon indicator to the frame rate in the game, which is what frame rates, uh, what FPS should be, what FPS cameras should do. Includes mouse cur include mouse cursor. It's kind of obvious. It includes your mouse cursor. Scaling you can do like a certain percent. So if you're recording in, um, if you're playing 1080p like I do, I only ever record in 720p because I don't, I don't. It takes it, it. I can't justify because it, it takes too long to render and too long to upload for me because my internet's not the best. So I go with size, and you can just set it to whatever resolution you want. But well, it can't be bigger than your the resolution you're playing at. So that's why mine's set at twelve eighty by seven twenty, because I play nineteen twenty by um ten eighty. So it's it's I think seventy five percent size. It might be half. It's not half, but it's about seventy five percent size. Maybe uh sixty six percent the size. So. That's what I do, and it, it just it records pretty well. So now onto audio. You can. This is where DX Story shines. You need to sort this out. Um, you can have your game audio and your microphone on separate channels, but recorded at the same time, so you don't have to sync up at all. And you can just do this by having multiple uh, channels. So in uh, channel one, I've got my uh, Blue Nessie USB microphone. You can change this for whatever you want. So I'm just gonna keep it. And my blue Nessie number two. I've got the um this is what you listen to your audio through. So I use I use a front panel uh HD audio connector or three point five millimeter jack, which is the real tech high definition audio thing, and it's just speakers, so I use that. So for yours it'll probably be it'll probably just be uh speakers or it's just whatever you listen to. If you don't know how to do this, go down to your uh speakers, right click it. Go to playback devices and just have a look. See which one's got this tick next to it. Take note of what that is. Just click that. Just make sure you know what one it is. Uh, close it and then just pick that in here because it will be in here. And also, if you've got Skype or something like that, you can have that in a separate channel. That's why I've got line two because I've got virtual audio cable. So I need to start. I need to set that up because I haven't done it yet, but I haven't collaborated with anyone since. I got virtual audio cables, so that's kind of pointless for me. But there's other videos. That's a whole other video in itself. But uh, when you're doing this, just pick PCM. It's it's a great. It's great. It sounds fine. And pick PCM 48,000 hertz, 16 bit stereo. Stereo makes it sound better. It's not mono, and it sounds like it's actually coming from two different places towards you. It, it's difficult to ex to, to describe. But it just makes it sound better, and also have forty-eight thousand hertz because it's not—it's not really high quality, but it's really—it's sort of standard these days. And yes, you could go with something like if I should have bought, go to the top, like one hundred ninety-two thousand hertz, like two-bit stereo. But that will take so much more storage, and it will take so much more power to actually record. So. Keep it as uh, default, which is PCM forty eight thousand hertz sixteen bits, uh, sixteen bit stereo on all of them. They're all the same. 
keep it there and as you and make sure you've got record sound ticked because I've done this before. I have recorded when I've because you add to another one and it might not be ticked. So make sure it's ticked when you do it. Because otherwise you won't hear it and you'll be doing a whole commentary and you won't have sound or you won't have your commentary and that will be really infuriating because I've done it for about half an hour before I realised it wasn't actually recording and that just scrapped the whole thing and I felt quite funny at the time so I got really quite annoyed but moving on to screenshot settings set this up how you will because I like my P, uh, PNG files um, I don't know why it, it, it's just I prefer them to JPEGs. So it's just easier to work with. Also, JPEG quality 100%. Just 100%. And make sure it's a scale is just put percent. Just get a percent and put 100%. Make sure it's the right size. It's, pictures don't take up more than a few kilobytes of data. You can of space. You've got plenty, plenty of room. So just just these settings and it'll be fine. And then. Advanced settings. Make sure your processing thread is maximum. So I've got four, I've got four threads in my computer. Make sure it's four. Uh, if you how many if you got AMD, how many cores you have in your CPUs? How many threads you got? If you got Intel and it's hyper threaded, you've got to times it by two. But anyway, what you want to do is just click on it and click the max so you can. For me, it's four. I've only got four threads. So, and you can, like, if you've got a really good GPU, but you haven't got, I mean, if you've got a multiple GPUs, click enable multi GPU fixed code because it will speed things up and force G uh, CPU processing will make it look a lot nicer and it will, like, make your GPU work better in the games you're playing. But my graphics card is fairly good for the games I play and record, so it's fine, I don't need to worry about that. But this video is already 19 minutes. But yeah, so. That's really all you need to know. Uh, and then you've got tools, and it, you, you can just change this to what you want. And it's just this; it only changes this part at the top. So you just changes, and nothing really else. Nothing else really changes. So yeah, that's mainly it. And then if these don't. I don't know what these are. You don't need to know them. All you need to know is a hotkey. Make sure it's in the save in the right area. And make sure they're the settings you want. As I say, Lagarith the Lossless Codec will be in the description below. Go download it now or in a second, but make sure you get it and use it. So, thank you for watching. Please like, rate, comment, and subscribe for more videos, gameplays, and tutorials. Maybe I'm going to get a course in 900D soon or review up soon. So, um, probably a build guide in it. Doubtful about that, but maybe. Anyway. As I say, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.